Hey guys, welcome back. So for this one, we're returning to Brian Hill's Blade series for part nine of the Mother of Evil, where now Blade's getting ready to put together his final plan just before the finale. And in the process, he's gonna make sure and tie up some loose ends as well. So if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so coming back, we find ourselves at a nightclub with Tanaka, who some of you guys might remember from back in issue 1, with him being the guy who set up Blade with false information that eventually led to Blade freeing the Adana. So fast forward to now with all hell breaking loose, with a number of people around the world having all sorts of dormant evils unlocked within them, Tanaka comes across this girl at the club who's just like, she's scared, and how for the longest time she didn't think demons were real, but now with them popping up everywhere, she finds it terrifying. So with Tanaka being a werewolf with no game, otherwise known as a simp walker, he just tells this girl, I'll protect you from them. And as soon as he does, a voice comes up from behind him saying, is that a fact, Tanaka? And before you know it, this guy's gone out the window. And I just imagine the young ladies watching this like, how can that man protect me? Look at him. So on his way down, Tanaka changes into his wolf form so that he can just land on his paws and make a break for it. But as soon as he touches down, all he sees is bright headlights behind him, just before he's smacked with a car driven by Rotha, followed by a green mist approaching him that forms into Blade. And Blade just lets him know, I told you what would happen if you played games with me. And really, back when we covered issue one, we knew this was coming. Because even before everything went left, Blade told Tanaka if he's lying, it's gonna be a problem. So of course, when we saw this whole thing was a setup, I was like, yeah, Blade not gonna let this slide. He's coming back for this man at some point. So from here, they end up taking Tanaka to a secluded area to get him to spill everything he knows about the Adana. But at first, Tanaka just doesn't want to cooperate. And he even tells Blade, like, what are you gonna do? Waterboard me? Like, he's not taking this serious. So Blade lets Draven take things from here. And Draven has no intention of going easy on this guy. Because for one, we're talking about the fate of the world here. But number two, secondly, it was Tanaka's lies that got them all in this mess to begin with. Because Draven had long since been prepared to kill the Adana. But after he was killed by Blade, who was led by Tanaka's lies, this cost him his life. And it blew the opportunity for her to be stopped earlier when she was in a weaker state. So fast forward to now, Draven's not taking any chances. And instead of threatening or beating the truth out of Tanaka, Draven just rips through Tanaka's mind, violently taking the truth from him by way of a painful process that leaves no secrets behind. Which for a moment, this kind of has Tulip like, okay, like this might be a little over the top. You know, show him some mercy. But Draven just keeps going until he gets everything that he needs. And I gotta say, I don't blame the guy. And when Draven's done, he tells Blade that he knows how to hunt the Adana. Though Tanaka, on the other hand, his mind is a mess. So Draven leaves for a moment while telling the others that he's got to save his strength for what's to come, while right here Tanaka begs Blade to just end it for him. Because whether he loses his mind or not, it's a wrap for this guy as soon as anyone finds out about the information that he's given up. Because the secrets he knew involve a number of others from the second world who have kept this information tight-lipped for centuries. And that's why he's just begging Blade to end them now. So Tulip covers Rotha's eyes as Blade does the deed. And just after, he tells both Tulip and Rotha to get some rest, cause they still got a demon queen to kill. And following this, we see Blade go to have a conversation with Draven, where again, Blade lets him know that he feels bad about killing him, you know, this whole thing being a misunderstanding. And Draven does tell Blade that he forgives him. And it comes off for Draven like it's easier to accept the defeat and forgive Blade than it is to think about what he's missing in the land of the living. But eventually in this conversation, Blade is like, okay, the Adana, how do I find her? So from here, Draven explains to Blade how her presence works after learning the truth from Tanaka's mind. So he tells Blade she is everywhere. She's in the heart of every man and woman who chooses evil. She embodies that, created by the universe to be living atrophy. She's in your rage, the satisfaction you feel when you cause violence. She believes she is the nature of all things. In many ways, she's not wrong. So in response, Blade tells Draven, like, you know, I meant literally, like, where can I find her? You know, so I can kill her? I appreciate the poetics though. So Draven tells him, I was a fisherman. And right there, Blade's just like, okay, so you're dedicated to being hard to talk to, huh? <laughs> Cause Blade just wants to know a location. But Draven assures Blade that if he follows his words, 
this will lead him to where he wants to go. And I'll admit with the way that Draven is about to explain this, this is one of the rare moments where I feel like the long winded answer is actually the best way to convey this message. Cause Draven goes on to say, I was a fisherman, fish feel the water move and they avoid the boat. They disappear into the sea and the hook goes hungry because fish don't want to be caught. So you need to give them something they do want, something that will make them ignore the boat, which then has Blade asking, so how do I put a worm on a hook? And Draven tells him, the Adana is a creature of arrogance. The weakness of arrogance is pride. Wound her pride and she will come for the boat, but be certain you can manage the hook, which right there is enough to put a smile on Blade's face. Cause now he's got a plan. So next, Blade makes his way back to Satana, who at first, she can't believe that Blade's asking for what he's asking for. Because after coming here, he's told her that he needs a way to make everything evil in the world want to kill him. Because in theory, if Blade draws enough attention, he can provoke the Adana to come for him. And when she does, he can use that same arrogance that lured her out against her. And though Satana's a bit hesitant at first, she eventually tells Blade that this might work. But at the same time, it could also blow up in his face because if Blade succeeds at getting all that is dark to come after him, there's a chance that they could be too much for him to handle. And to take it a step further, even if he can handle them, who's to say that he can actually defeat the Adana when she shows up? So Blade just tells her that he's more of a cross that bridge when I get to it kind of person. So nonetheless, she agrees, and she goes on to give Blade the details on where he can do the most damage, which after this sends Blade to a sacred location that's only supposed to be known by full blood creatures of the second world which is a place called the Archives of the Second World. It's packed with ancient books and all sorts of dark secrets. So of course, with Blade knowing about this place, let alone being here, he's already offending the darkest forces in the world. But that's exactly what he wants, because destroying this place and slaughtering everyone here, this is just step one. But for a moment here, one of these guys who's still alive, he tells Blade, now that he's defiled this sacred place, he's gonna be the scourge of the darkest forces in the world. <laughs> so Blade's like, are you sure? Because I need you to be sure. Cause again, that's exactly what Blade's going for here. And Blade even goes as far as to ask this guy, what happens if I kill you and burn this place down? <laughs> like, what'll that do for me? And this guy just pauses for a moment like, man, you can't be serious. And then the next thing we see is this smirk on Blade's face just before he takes this dude's head off and blows this place up, which then causes news to travel rather quickly about what Blade's doing. Cause next we see Doctor Strange make his way over to Satana to tell her that he assumes it was her who told Blade the location of the archives of the second world. And she's just more or less like, well, yeah, you know, he asked nicely. And it just has Strange wondering why would she help Blade get the attention of the Adana? So she tells Strange there's really no heroic motivations behind it. She just wants to see what happens. And besides, there was nothing but a bunch of old books in there that nobody read. So Strange tells her like, hey, you know Blade cannot beat the Adana, right? So again, she just goes back to the whole idea of wanting to see how this plays out because Blade asked for help, not Faith. And she even goes on to say like, hey, you never know, Blade just might join the Adana, which right there just merits a crazy side eye from Doctor Strange. But from here, right away, we're shown that Blade's plan is working because a number of creatures and beings from the second world They've made their way to the Adana, looking for her to give some type of response to everything that Blade's doing. And because the Adana's seen her people coming to her in fear, with Blade inviting war on himself against all darkness, only to have the Adana do nothing, she takes this as a huge sign of disrespect. So she flames this person. Because for the Adana, a lot of this, it is pride, but also for her. Back in issue 5, when she unlocked the dormant occult powers in a number of people across the world, this was her showing them who she is and how she was going to make evil and darkness as prominent as the light. So now, after showing this to her people, only to have them turn around and be like, well, what about Blade? To the Adana, this is like the highest form of disrespect, because even after she's shown them her truth and her promise, they're still afraid. So the Adana, she just burns this one. And she's like, you can keep burning until your screams satisfy me. But she goes on to tell the others to spread the word because she will honor their needless traditions by going forward to destroy the Daywalker, which from here just leaves us the finale where Blade will face the mother of evil one last time. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below. 
where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And we'll do it again on the next one. All right. Later. <laughs>